Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hello, welcome to Finding Respect in the Chaos on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm so glad that you've come to join us today. I'm here with um, Roy Chang and Victoria Chang from the law firm Shimon Chang, and we are going to be talking about the important things that are involved going forward with all the new legislation we have. I'm sure people have been hearing on the, the radio and on the TV, people announcing, hey, you know, you guys can come out your, after your abusers. You actually have two years now that's been added. And there's some other things that have been added too. So I want to welcome you guys. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming. I really yeah. appreciate you guys you being here. Thank you. Well, what you guys do is amazing. And, and you have a very long history. I know that the the law firm of Chim and Chang has been there since uh, 1966, which right. is a long time. And right. you've been there since, what, 1979, I mm -hmm. think? Yeah, That's you've right. been there for quite a long yes. time, too. Mm -hmm. And you both came uh, from the prosecutor's office, right? Can you tell us a little bit about what you guys did at the prosecutor's office? Well, I'll let Victoria go first. Uh, well, thank you, Cynthia. I actually just started at Chim and Chang in July of this year. And prior to that, I was with the um, City and County of Honolulu Prosecutor's Office for 10 years. Uh -huh. And over four of those years, I spent with the sex assault team. And so I had the opportunity to work with victims of sexual abuse, um, both children and adults. I've had the opportunity to work with doctors and um, crisis workers at the Sex Abuse Treatment Center. So um, it was a great experience, and I learned a lot right. while I was there. Thank you for yeah. all of that you do. And you were there too, right? So what That's were you right. doing there? Almost the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was there for two, um, basically two and a half years. And okay. I was assigned to mostly, back then we didn't call them sex assault cases, we called them rape cases. All right. And so I was assigned to doing most of those types of cases and had the opportunity to work with the victims. And I think that's really the, the key, or one of the rewarding parts of being a prosecutor. It isn't just about um, you know, having a case, it's about, you no, know, there's a victim, and she needs to have her day in court. That's or right. Or even he needs to have their day in court. Right. And that was part of the rewarding thing. Uh, right, and so that was from the criminal side, right? That's right. what you guys were mm -hmm. looking at from right. that side. And now it's from the other side, mm -hmm. and, um, Right, so looking from the civil side, mm -hmm. which is a really big thing. And I know that if some of you have been with me before, you know, you've heard me talk about how important it was to me. I didn't remember my abuse till I was 30. And so when I, I did, I, I found out that there was this thing called delayed discovery. This was in 1980, early 1980s. And they had just started this new thing called delayed discovery. And I was in the first handful of cases that were tried, and we I was successful. And I'll tell you, it was the most empowering thing that has ever happened in all of my healing. I would say that was number one in the, the biggest part of making me know, hey, he's going to stand accountable, and there will be some kind of measure of retribution for me. Right in the in the sense of, I he had to sell his house. You know, I won a really nice suit that was able to um, allow me to pay for therapy and move forward with my life in a way that I couldn't have afforded to do before. So I really I want everyone to know out there if you are in a position where you have been abused in any way, if you have been abused at work or at school or at home, wherever it is, I want you to know that there is hope, there is help, not just from the criminal side, not just from the police. You can go to, you could come to Shim and Chang and they could help you out. And I know that you guys do free consultations so that if anyone out there needs help, and I recommend it, Highly. You have a bunch of extra years. Now, that's what I'd like to talk about, because when I went online, I wasn't really able to get all the specifics of this new bill. But I know that through the law, um, I'm not sure what the name of the thing is, but you guys have access to stuff that us normal people don't get. So you have some information that I don't have, and I'd love it if you would share it with our viewers. Well, let me just clarify that yes. there are two court systems. 
right. is the criminal courts, okay. which is where we were at one point in time as prosecuting attorneys. Right. And there, it's a, the caption of the case would be State of Hawaii versus a defendant. Okay. So in other words, the victim never really has a, the opportunity to recover anything. It's really the state trying to hold someone accountable, okay. and if they committed a crime, then they would pay for the crime that they committed. The civil courts, or the civil side, is where we're at now. Right. And that is where, in, in your situation, on the civil side, the individual, the victim, has the opportunity to recover something for themselves. It isn't yes. just to protect society. It's to recover something for themselves. All of the harm that they've suffered throughout their lifetime, right. that's their opportunity. And that's where the civil side comes in, and that's what we do at this point in time. Right. Thank you for explaining mm -hmm. that way more eloquently than I did. <laughs> I just know it from the personal side, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I appreciate hearing it from the legal side, mm -hmm. too. Thank you. Right. And so Victoria can explain to you about the new law and how it's given victims the opportunity to have a longer period in which to bring a claim. And right. I'll let her go ahead and go from there. Okay. So this past legislative session, Act 98, basically extends the statute of limitations that was previously in place okay. for these types of civil sexual abuse complaints. Okay. And so there's different sub, uh, sections and subsections um, that were amended, the years, the time allowed for a victim of child sexual abuse to bring a claim. Okay. And so the first section talks about uh, a minor who, once that minor reaches the age of 18, that minor has eight years after 18, so until the minor turns 26, to bring a claim, or if the minor's abuser was happened to have been younger than the minor, then you could take that, you would add on to when that abuser turns 18, you've got eight years from that date. From so that, their, their from the maturity. From abuser's oh. age of maturity. Um, okay. Right, so that gives the minor uh, victim more right. time. And then also as part of that, First um, subsection, the minor has three years after discovering that he or she had been sexually abused as a child. And so like, that's kind of like exactly, mine. Exactly. Right. I was 30 before I realized or remembered any of it. Right. And back then it was just one year, in California mm -hmm. anyway, because um, that's where I brought my suit. And it was just one year. I only had one year to do it. Right. So, like you said, Cynthia, in your situation, you didn't realize it until you were 30. And that's very common. And exactly. It's not just me, as in, like, I'm sort of a standout or, uh, you know, kind of person that's unusual. Right. Really, that's the norm. Exactly. Is that 30 years old right. to, to remember. And even if you've sort of had this inkling, memory, you sort of have remembered, mm -hmm. but you haven't had the emotional strength right. to deal with it exactly then and then it's just like as if you've just finally remembered even though you, you sort of knew all along mm -hmm. but it's it's the same idea as you had just remembered because right. you finally get strong enough to be able to um to go forward right. i know when they they um i should say we had justin murakami who is the one of the policy writers at satc um, was on, and he was talking about how they were trying to work with some of the um, the lower statutes that were in the amendment, that, and that they originally had gone for uh, extending the age to 40, mm -hmm. but it, they, it didn't pass. And I know that next month I'm supposed to have Cynthia Thielen on, and we're going to talk a little bit more about how things are going to change and how we can ramp up the the fight, so to speak, to go back again and see if we can't get it past this next time, since it didn't pass last time. Well, actually, Cynthia, so in that subsection of this new, um, of Act 98, mm -hmm. um, for situations, uh, someone who is 40 could possibly still bring a claim, uh, as long as, say, the realization that oh, the experiences, right. the emotional challenges that you're experiencing at the present, um, as long as it's within three years of you realizing that the reason you're going through these challenges at the moment is because or attributed to child sexual abuse. Oh, so You've there got is three, a way to get around that. Right. You have three years from the date of that realization. 
It's hard to prove, though. That's an issue of how do you prove when it happened. Like, I know the lawyer for me was saying that it was easy because I was in therapy when I remembered. I was having issues with my husband, which is what got me there to therapy. And I kept thinking, I can't have had this perfect life and still end up with a guy like this. You don't make choices like this. If there, there's something wrong. I just don't know what it is. There's something wrong, I kept saying. And finally, one day, I was able to come and say, yeah, I know what it was. But so I had a, a specific mark. Mm -hmm. And so I know it's important for people to get help, reach out for help. Um, you know, there's, there's hope and healing out there. And unfortunately, people are so um, silenced by the shame that they don't get out there. Mm -hmm. So I think that the more lawsuits that can happen now, the better. The more people that can talk about it, the better. Mm -hmm. So that people know they're not alone and that they know that there are people out there that want to help. Right. And I think that's an important thing. And that's really unfortunately the burden is on the victim yeah. to prove that it happened. Right. And so you're touching on ways that it can be done. Well, of course, is that when that realization occurs, if she or he is going through therapy, the therapist can potentially become a witness. A witness, right. Uh, corroboration through family members. Because a lot right. of times these yeah. kinds of offenses occur not in a vacuum. Sometimes they do, but not always in a vacuum. Yeah. Somebody knows. Somebody knows, And yeah. so you need to go and contact those people. But unfortunately, the burden is on the, the claimant to prove right when he or she discovered it, and then the clock then starts to run mm -hmm. for those three years. Right. So that's why it's so important to get into counseling. Mm -hmm. Find somebody, a pastor, a, you know, a priest if you're a Catholic, whatever. Um, you know, go to your rabbi if you're Jewish. Go, go somewhere. Find someone that you can talk to, even if it's like your boss, if that's something that you can do, or maybe a a teacher that you really trust at school, um, things like that, that it's just so important to reach out to somebody, you know, and, and that way you can mark the time frame at that moment, which is an important thing to do. Right. Right. So in all of this stuff that, um, that is changing, I know that one of the things that was a big deal to make it change was the Kamehameha Schools. Um, suit that came out. There's a big thing in the newspaper today even about this some 60 million lawsuit or settlement or some such thing like that that was done for those all, was it 30, I think, victims that came out of that um, Dr. Brown, who was a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. And that's when, you know, you go, wait a minute. Here I am telling people to go reach out for help and then here this guy who's a psychiatrist is, you know, totally betraying his responsibility to these kids. And, and, and I think you're touching on another part of the law, which I think is, is important for people to understand, that not only did this one particular statute increase the time in which you could file a claim or to bring a lawsuit uh, as far as against the abuser, the actual abuser, there's a second part of the law that allows you to bring that claim within the same statute of time timeframes against a legal entity, a business, a school, a church, an organization, oh, to right. allow okay. you to bring a claim, like in the Bishop um, uh, State uh, claim against community schools, um, that you could sue the school, and uh -huh. that statute allows for that, and it also allows for the extension of statute of limitations. See, people sometimes think, I can only sue the abuser, and right. that's not true. You can sue the legal entity that had control over that abuser, right. or was aware sure. of what was going on, um, or had a duty responsibility to you as the victim. So uh -huh. as students, Kamehameha schools owed a duty to them. Right. They were their students. They had to protect them uh, from someone like this. Right. So the, the statute allows... You can see allows where their responsibility is now, too. Yeah. So okay, that's and this opens statute. up a whole new bunch that's of stuff that we're going to talk about as soon as we come back. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a little break. This is Find Your Respect in the Chaos. Please don't go anywhere. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics 
and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of New Japanese Language Show on Think Tech Hawaii called Konnichiwa Hawaii. Broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha. Hello, welcome back to Finding Respect in the Chaos. I'm Cynthia Lee Sinclair, and I'm here with Roy Chang, and I'm here with Victoria Chang, the lawyers from Shimon Chang here in Honolulu that has been around for 50 years. This is a, an amazing law firm, and we had a great conversation going right before the break, and I want to continue on that a little bit. Can you give us a little bit more? I know we were talking over the break, and I, I want to make sure our, our viewers hear all of that, too. One, Victoria, just to finish up, one more statute of limitations exception, okay. which the statute uh, provides for. And then as soon as she explains that, then I'll explain why it was so important. Okay, cool. <laughs> This is great. I love having you guys here. You're so smart. So um, in, under Act 98, there's one more subsection, subsection B, that addresses uh, child uh, sexual abuse claims that have statute of limitations that have already expired. Okay. So basically after eight years from April 24th, 2012 is the date that is specific to the statute. It adds eight years to that. So any claim that had already been time barred by maybe today now mm -hmm. has until April 24th, 2020 to bring a claim. So those okay. time barred claims, as, as long as Um, it was, I guess, the expiration of the, um, as the law that was in effect as of April 24th, 2012. Oh, okay. So if they had a time barred claim then, they now have until April 24th, 2020 to bring a claim. So this opens up a whole bunch of opportunities for women or men, the people, I should say, that have been abused. And the statute of limitations is way gone, and yet they're still able to come back and, and have some kind of a civil case against their abusers. That's awesome. And, and again, but let's be real clear. Right. Uh, these are uh, victims who were abused when they were minors. Okay. Now, there's also a lot of other people who are currently adults who are now who have been abused as an adult. That opens up a whole other area. You also have a claim. So even though you're not a minor, you're an adult, you could be of any age, you oh. could bring a claim either against the abuser and or the legal entity that might be responsible either for you or for the um, abuser. Oh, so, it's like seeing in a church or in a workplace oh, right. kind of a situation, right? Exactly. Like in the workplace, for example, you're, you've been working and a coworker or your supervisor abuses you, sexually abuses or harasses you. Now, you, you can bring two claims. The first claim is you can actually bring a worker's compensation claim Oh. that uh, the statute allows the one exception. Normally, you can't sue your employer if you're em employed. The one exception is if someone, the, either your employer or someone working for your employer, causes the abuse, you can claim worker's compensation benefits. So you can be entitled to wage loss, medical treatments, medical bills will all be paid. In addition, you can file a civil claim, like what, we're, what we do, against your employer and the co-employee for the other kinds of damages which our law allows, such as the pain and suffering, the mental anguish, the emotional distress, right. all the things which we know victims go through. If we were to take their lives just before the abuse happened and, and, and how wonderful that life was, and now right. darkened it. Right. Well, everything that's changed because of this abuser you can bring a claim for all those changes. And wow. that's the important thing about the civil law. Now those, as far as adults though, statute of limitations is either two years from when the abuse occurred or when you also discovered it again. So that discovery also applies to, but you know, adults who are, who are being abused in a workplace or a church or uh, cool. on schools or whatever setting, okay, right. also have claims. And they really should explore it. And that's what law firms are for. 
Now, law right. firms are here to at least tell you whether you have a claim or not, whether you're within the statute of limitations. We're here for you Absolutely. to allow you that opportunity to right. know. And again, as far as consultations go, not only just our firm, but other law firms are very similar. They don't charge. We don't charge you just to talk, just to right. come in and find out, you know, what are my rights? Am I still within the time frame? And right. if I were to pursue a claim, what's involved with all that? I mean, how difficult is it to bring a claim? And we can explain all those things to that person. Right. Can you give us sort of a quick sort of overview of what's involved if they were to come forward sure. with a claim? Sure. It, it, first of all, it could be initially just a phone call. We get a lot of people just calls you, I, I may have a claim, I don't know. It says, well, tell us a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. And so from there, we will schedule them to come in and in a private conference room, and of course, everything is confidential. Whatever is said to you, an attorney, it, there's a confidential uh, you know, client. And, that's, and the law, that's the law, man. That's the law, right. You can't say anything. Exactly. <laughs> and then we'll go through, well, here's what the law is. You know, that abuse really is, is in tort law, it's, it's a battery. It's an assault on right. a person. So we explain the law to them. And then we'll explain to them what we would have to prove. You know, what do we have to say? It's her word, his word, corroboration. That's probably the like hardest that. time is that he hard. said, she said once, right? Of course, there's always hard. Mm -hmm. But if sure. we corroborate it, that would be wonderful. Injuries, we need to then talk about the injuries. We need to find out, okay, how has it affected you? Right. All right, and, and, and that's where it sometimes is hard because they don't really want to talk about it. Right. But because everything is in confidence, they can and they should because we can't evaluate how extensive the harm has been till they tell us. And, and you'd be surprised as they talk more and more as to how their life has been affected will right. come out. I and wouldn't that's what be we surprised. Talk about. Maybe some people, but not me. Because <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I've been there, done that. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, but I so I understand this is yeah, right. So they need to tell somebody though that, mm -hmm. and this you guys are like the perfect people to tell, mm -hmm. even because you have all the information sure. that somebody might need to go forward, which is mm -hmm. so important. Right. Like I, I know I keep saying it over and over, but it changed my life. Mm -hmm. And and I that's one of, that's the one main reason why I wanted you guys to come on the show. It's because I want other people to know that they have the opportunity to change their lives. That's a big thing. Mm -hmm. And especially how empowering it is to stand up and mm -hmm. say no more. Right. You know? And and I think you really hit it on the nose. And what people don't really understand is that in the process, there's actually two healings that need to take place. The first, of course, is the obvious one, right? It's right. the physical, the mental, the emotional healing that right. needs to take place. And, you know, that, that's important. The second healing that I think every victim has to have is so-called the legal healing. Yeah. You don't have the legal part of it until you've had, like, for example, in the community of schools things, until they've had the, either their day in court or held, holding the, the culpable mm -hmm. people responsible. Right. Okay. So that's part of the legal healing, and that's where we get involved. We can't help with, this, with the, you know, the <laughs> emotional, the mental language healing. That's where the, the, the specialists are there for. Right. Our specialty is to help with the legal healing. Right. Getting them into court if they have to, giving them the damages they're entitled to, getting them the recovery they have to, or giving them the opportunity to talk about it. And right. to, to look that other person eye to eye, sometimes that's important, and that's right. all part of the legal process. So we handle the legal healing, the doctors can handle the other side. But you have to have the legal healing together with it. Right, I agree, absolutely. It, it needs to be a twofold thing. So um, I have a question of, what if there was someone, I'll just use me as an example, because it works out good. I have to be in the courtroom now with my abuser. Mm. Now, that can be a terrifying thing. What kind of things can someone do? Because I know for me, that was my first thought. I can't go to court. I can't, I can't look at him in the eye again. You know, and I had someone with me. I had a good counselor mm -hmm. that went with me mm -hmm. to help me, you know, stay strong in all of it so that I could stand up to him and look him in the eye mm -hmm. and tell him he was wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, is that the kind of thing that is mm -hmm. something that still happens? Like a counselor could go with people mm -hmm. to meet with you and maybe even go to court right. with you? Sure. And I think perhaps I would defer this one to Victoria because yes, it does occur, but that's a lot of what she did when she was at the oh, prosecutor's okay. office. And she can explain, at least on that side, 
how it all occurs and the preparation and, and who goes with them. Because you hit it on the nose, you need mm -hmm. someone to help you. you need so somebody, I want to explain right? what, what yeah. happens on the on the criminal side in the prosecutor's office and what they do, the great job that they do for victims. I'll let her kind of okay, uh, yeah. So uh, <clears throat> at the prosecutor's office, actually, a a victim witness advocate is assigned to every case and remains with that victim throughout oh. from the inception of the case, from when it's charged up until the time that it either goes to trial or maybe a plea agreement is reached. But that uh, advocate remains with the victim. Wow. Sometimes the attorneys may change on the case, mm -hmm. but the office felt that it was so important that those victims have the same advocate throughout the entire time. And some cases might be resolved within a year. Other cases may take four or five years right. to Sure. Mm -hmm. So what kind of caseload do those guys have? Do they have like five case cases that they deal with or 20 cases that they deal with all at the same time or so um, being the advocates yeah the advocates so the right. advocates they they rotate so there's a, a group of victim witness advocates right. that work with the office and so when a case comes in then the I guess the supervisor for that unit the victim witness advocate unit right. will designate a certain advocate to a case Right. And then that advocate remains with the victim, sort of serves as a um, an additional line of communication for the victim if he or she is trying to reach the attorney, has questions about um, maybe not just legal questions, but also questions about uh, counseling or other right. services that might be available to the victim. That advocate can point the victim in a certain direction. So is victim witness only for criminal? Well, there's also... Or does it mm -hmm. apply for civil, too? Sure. We can also do that on the civil side, too. You know, oh, okay. Whoever they're comfortable with, whether it's their counselor or whomever, we would work with them at the same time because they're the ones who can... Let me explain this way. It's very hard for someone to get on the stand and talk about themselves. Yes. Good or bad. It's always very, very difficult. Many times, it's a lot easier if we can have their counselor, their therapist, do the talking for them. Okay, so you it's encourage a, a counselor to be with the people. Work with them. Right. And the other okay. thing which I think is also wonderful about the prosecutor's office is doing is that all victims come in all, come in all sizes and ages and so yeah, forth. Right. They also do a lot for children. And let's yeah. not forget the minors. Yeah, and they're the ones. Not they're the main ones we want to help right. here. And, and what's a wonderful thing that they do? They, so mm -hmm. what they also have is a courthouse dog. And um, right. the, that's Dennis Dunn. Exactly. I know Dennis. Right. He's right. coming right. on the show in a few weeks. <laughs> so I know that Dennis now has a new courthouse dog. Um, prior to that, it was Pono. And right. Pono was amazing. And yeah, basically, but Pono got old, so he had to be retired. Right, right. <laughs> so, um, and, and Pono wasn't just available for children, though. There were adults that um, if the adult was in, just scared about being in court, taking the stand, right. Pono would just sit there. Hang out, sit there and with them. It was Aww. a calming presence so for cool. that victim. And so <sighs> I think that's a great, um, something that the prosecutor's office has really right. worked for to get yes. these courthouse dogs in courthouses in Hawaii. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm things. so grateful. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, this is our last thing because then we got to go. Okay. Because I know the guy's right. in the booth telling me it's time to go. But I, I, yeah, I want to give you guys the last thing. What's up? Sure. Well, I, I think we just want to let people know that right. you're not alone. Yeah. Okay? That we're called advocates for a reason. Mm -hmm. It's because we advocate for you. Right. We get you ready. You know, you're asking about, you know, how do I face my, my, my uh, abuser? We get you ready for that. We right. take our clients down to the courthouse. We put them on the witness stand. We says, this is where he's going to be. This is where you're going to be. And this is where I'm going to stand and ask you the questions. Right. So we prepare them. We advocate for them. And just want to let people know, you know, you're not alone in this problem, this process. That's why you hire lawyers, so that we can be there for you every awesome. step of the way. That's uh, like the perfect way to end, too. What a perfect note to end on. You're not alone, people. Did you hear that? You're not alone. Uh, this has been a great show. And I really want to thank you guys for coming and sharing your expertise and, and your Great intellect. You guys are really smart. <laughs> I love having smart people on the show. So I want to thank everyone for coming to see Finding Respect in the Chaos. It's been an important show, and I, I really hope that anyone out there, 
um, has gotten some good information here. And if you have any questions at all, you can contact us here at ThinkTech. You can contact Shimon Chang. Um, I want to thank you for, for coming. This is Cynthia Lee Sinclair signing out from thinktechhawaii.com.